CCR report has been posted uh, online. We do have that up now. Uh, Jamie, if you want to just real quickly go over what that entails. Well, that, that, that's the 2016 water report for all the, the uh, sampling and everything we've done, everything met state regulations. So. Uh, by law, it has to be noticed on the water bills, which were printed today, to actually go out today. Um, so it can now be posted on the website. But there's that report if you're interested in the activity of the uh, consumer confidence report. Is that what that stands for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, anything else, Jim? No, that's pretty much all we got. Uh, sewer department, Ken? Uh, we're just business as usual. Daily maintenance and being performed as we schedule. Uh, we're getting a couple new neighbors up in Summerfield uh, subdivision. Two homes being built up there. I think we had a uh, water
There is all, there's one for all the eight North Kentucky County, and then there's a one that, like I said, is a combination of all eight counties. The <coughs> um, next thing I wanted to pass on to, I sent the council this letter, um, and uh, it would, I'll let Pete explain it a little bit more, but this is the letter the council asked for us to send to City of Weemstown and the water rates, so. Is there anything else you would add to this? I did send this by email to everybody by the council and I sent it to uh, the mayor Skinner just as a, a courtesy there. Yeah, a couple of that, that was set up on May 20th or 21st. Uh, I did get a call from Jeff Shipley, actually in a couple of days. Um, Jeff, uh, of course, he had a difference of opinion on, on some of the issues that I raised. But with that said, he did uh, he did state that uh, he thought it'd be a good idea if uh, if him uh, Mayor Skinner uh, Mayor Wells and I had a meeting to see if we could perhaps work something out. Um, now that was about was going ten days ago. He said he was going to have his assistant uh, set up that meeting, uh, and because I, I told him that I wanted to have something to report back at tonight's meeting. As far as I know, she has not attempted to set that meeting up, uh, and then uh, tonight's taking oh, place. Uh, I'm making a note because I have uh, my assistant follow up with his about getting that scheduled as soon as possible. Um, and we'll see if we can move this forward and find out if the city is willing to uh, <coughs> at least close the gap over time of what drivers is being charged versus what they're charging everybody else. I think there are some legitimate issues there um, about uh, specifically whether or not uh, in a past review that, that they're charging how much they're paying for us and everybody else uh, for the same service. Um, uh, we discussed it in here. It, it, it seems to me that, as is often in the case, the city garbage tends to be the path of least resistance when it comes to imposing costs. Um, and what have you, and that uh, that's a problem. Um, and I, uh, you guys read it, it was pretty blunt. I said, I think that at this point, in this council, we're going to do something about this, or people are garbage, we'll get somebody else as well. So, so uh, I will do my best to get some sort of a meeting arranged before this before we come back on. That's the letter you asked us to draft and send in, and at least start the conversation. The next thing I have is I just have the financials listed. I just want to save time and not go through the, all of those. If you want, we can go through those, or you can go through those if you're leisure. So I'll be happy to go through them if you want. They are on. So we'll move on into old business. Um, this is, uh, first item is Ordinance 829 2017 the gas franchise advertises uh, ordinance. And this ordinance is an ordinance creating and establishing that we did a non-exclusive natural gas franchise for the placement of facilities for the transmission and distribution of sale of natural gas within the public right-of-way of the city of Fire Ridge for 15-year duration and closing the franchise fee in the sum of up to 5% of franchisee. Gross receipt per year from the franchise sale of natural gas, gas consuming entities inside the city of Fire Ridge is corporate limit and further providing for compliance with relevant laws, regulations, and standards, identification, insurance, cancellation on determination, and bid requirements, all effective on the date of passage. And that's a summary of what this ordinance is. Um, the way this process works is this, this ordinance allows us to go ahead and bid, that, bid the franchises out. Um, once we do that, notice will be served in the paper. The franchisees can submit their bids, which there's one franchisee currently for the city, which is Duke Energy. Um, it's just a process of renewing the franchise agreement process. So, so they'll turn their bids in and we'll have another, this will be on the agenda again later uh, to accept their, uh, accept their bids for franchise to have the right to distribute gas within the city limits. This is just an update of the franchise that has expired. Okay. Entertain a motion to accept Ordinance 829-2017. Second. 
Motion by Sarah. I have a second. Sarah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. Okay. Second by Jim. All in favor? Can I have a roll call? Mm -hmm. Mr. Carper? Yes. Mr. Edmondson? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Motion carries. All right. Item number two, eight, 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 eight thirty one, two thousand seventeen, which is the water rate change order that we talked about um, in discussion at the last time. And I don't know if you had a chance to go through and look at this, but um, one of the things that we tried to do is, is clean up uh, a lot of the ordinances. Um, a lot of the ordinances that we've had in place up to now have been, have all relied on or pointed back to another ordinance or another ordinance. Now, if you'll see at this one, there were uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven ordinances that it referred to. Um, so what we did is uh, I had uh, Pete crack this so to repeal all of those ordinances and put that all into one document so you're not spending 25 minutes trying to find all of the language that pertains to the ordinance. So even by doing that, it's still a two-page ordinance. It's uh, considerably reduced in size. So Are you going to wait and see what the new is going to be or? Well, this is what we're going to have to do. Well, we're going to have to do something in the <coughs> and I don't know if the town is willing to bring us to the point where we're not going to have to pass something along to the customer. Um, we, we can go through this. In and this is getting our tier rate out? This is taking the tier rate out, which um, we modified today. We uh, changed the language in section yeah. 3. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that's why. Um, this this takes section two out, which takes tiers out and puts it at a flat rate of eleven fifty for each thousand gallons. So the the minimum bill is is uh, twenty three dollars, and it's currently twenty one dollars. So for the, <coughs> the minimum uh, minimum bill, it's a two dollar increase. Now that's on the minimum bills. Where the difference is going to be is in all of the people who have over the minimum because the previous year's tiers would start to, that you would come down off of that rate. The problem was we were paying more for the water than we were charging the customer for that, those tiers. So, um, and you don't have to answer the questions when the phone calls start coming in. <laughs> the only other thing I think we talked about a little bit was whether or not we wanted to include some language to, uh, to automatically increase the dollar amount or the percentage uh, so that we didn't get stuck with a big increase. Because uh, our next contract with Williamstown is in two years, um, and then we have again another 10 percent, or another possible 10 percent increase. So we're going to have one before that. Well, well, yeah, we'll probably have one next year <coughs> with the water problem. Yeah, but we know we have 10 percent coming up next month, um, <coughs> and we know in two years the contract allows for another 10 percent. So. We didn't know what your thoughts were. If you wanted to include some language that we would, in, we would adjust it on an annual basis in anticipation. So in, instead of getting a 10 or 15 percent increase in two years, all at one time, you get five percent increase next year, and then five percent next year, and next year. But it's we keep coming back to this: how do we word this? What how how would you like that to be? Kind of drafted. So, what was you that? definitely want to look at That was a suggestion. That was a suggestion. But we know um, the last two times, uh, the last two increases when you kind of pass along is the full 10%. Um, 
And as Kenny alluded to in the conversations that we had with him that day, is we are probably going to see another increase next year when the water plant is finished on top of our contract. So it's going to be over six months, maybe a million or another six months. I mean, we can always come back and change the ordinance and, and, and raise the rate, you know, by a percentage, but what's your thoughts? My thought is I don't want my water bill to go up. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't either, but we've seen the numbers, the city of Georgia. How much are we losing there, Vermont? Well, we, as far as the total bill, yeah, yes, well, we are. We barely mm -hmm. bring in enough in revenue to cover the bill. That doesn't count any of that. That's just paying for. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sounds like you need a bigger truck. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty thousand. 
surplus. I think that was okay. Was it 50? Okay, I couldn't remember so last time. So you're going to put fifty thousand dollars a year in surplus. That would be in surplus. That's, that's, <coughs> that's at this number. <coughs> Okay, I'm all for having money in the bank, but from here on out for three years, we're going to put the hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's going to keep growing. What are we going to do with the money? If we're going to raise the rates, to the, if we're going to raise the rates to the customers, what are we actually going to do with the money? I understand your point. I don't. I don't want somebody to corner me and say, "Okay, you all raise the rates. So you're all you're going to do is bank the money. What are you going to do with it?" Yeah. Just because you're getting money in, what are you doing with it? All right, no, it's, that's a good question. And what you have to think about what you do when you start to create a surplus in that account <coughs> is that's what allows you to have that rainy day fund for the catastrophe. Because right now we don't have that. Um, but there's also going to be expenses along the way. The cost of doing business increases every year. Uh, <coughs> equipment becomes more expensive. Maybe not the water cost wouldn't increase so much, but uh, we're anticipating another increase in two years. We don't know how much that cost will be, so we don't have to maybe get to the point where we don't have to push that uh, that increase on to the customer. Um, instead of having to wait ten years before we do an increase, basically what this what the city did is with the money that they built up over the years in the surplus, they absorbed that cost increase from the cost of water that increased over those years, the 28% increase since the contract was signed. So the city absorbed that and paid for that out of that surplus money. Um, now that surplus is out. So if we start and build that surplus back again, then that may get us uh, where we don't have to do such a large increase in the future. That's one possible thing. There's, there's too many variables to know exactly what's happening three or four years. I'm glad to answer the question at all. But there's always more expenses. The expenses get more every year. I can no, cost more. I cost just don't want the quick. question to come up to say, you know, well, now the county's raised this this much for payroll, and mm -hmm. now you're raising this much, and what are you going to do with the money? All you're doing is softening us with taxes and increases, and Second tier about the second tier is what's hurting it. 
it wasn't your first tier. That one, had they all been that way at the 1050 the whole time, I don't think you would be in this situation. It was that second tier at five dollars for every thousand, <coughs> over two thousand, is is what hurt. Yeah. It was that second one. <coughs> so putting that one at six would not um, solve the issue. Mm -hmm. Now, if we put the tiers back in, you would have to raise all of. You'd have to raise everything across the board, so everybody would still be would still see an increase. This is a simpler method for it, but it's not. We can put the tiers back in, it's not a problem, but when we do the math on that, the tiers get more expensive exponentially because, uh, just because of the amount of water. Is it 62 million gallons a year? Mm -hmm.
My view for, for is the discussions with Jeff and the city aren't going to impact this at all. I mean, realistically, we're looking at getting the dry ridge in line with the other two cities, primarily I don't think about any of us involved, over the course <coughs> probably the next couple of years. So it would be my best guess that we're really looking at slowing the rate of increase um, while the others are perhaps seeing an acceleration of the, the rate of increase on the water uh, to narrow that gap over time. And I think that's the most realistic outcome. It's not going to change the cost now. It's going to narrow it down. Um, so um, while I think those discussions with Williamstown are absolutely necessary going forward, Rates are what they are now. We're just going to try to do what we can to keep the increase, uh, slow the increase in the next few years. Where again, at the time we get this line with everybody else. All right. So we've got two different ideas here. I just want a consensus on this. Do you want to table this? Do you want to have the first reading? Well, they're probably not going to lower it. Like Pete said, they're probably going to accelerate the other bulk customers to try and come somewhere closer to the you would like to get that it's in your in, in your side yard and in your in your kitchen window and when you bought this house and you was trying to remodel it sir, and somebody sir, parked sir, sir, no, sir. No, that's okay, here you I understand what what you're saying but everybody up on easy street has boats and cars campers and they keep their own stuff at their own house yeah and one or two that's <laughs> not uh, 15 or 20. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you go back to the podium and address the council, please? Okay. Okay. We have him here to answer questions. Okay. But I mean, I'm sure if you let these all parked in your backyard, I mean, I could see if he had one or two, but I mean, you got 15 or 20, and you looked out your kitchen window or your back door, and you walked down on your back porch, and there you've seen a bunch of ski dudes and boats. 
I have, I do have a question since everybody's here in the room. Um, Polly. Yes. Are those are those CDs your personally owned vehicles? Everyone at that, at, everyone at that property except for one boat, which is Polly Lewis. It, it's that's it. Other one wasn't mine at that property right now. Okay. So you're not using that property for commercial purposes? Nope. All my commercial stuff stays at the shop, and my personal stuff stays out there. Right. Okay. Now, other than the nuisance ordinance, we the zoning does not regulate non-commercial use. Okay. You can use when you did and all those at one time. I, mean, I could see one or two there for your for your use. <coughs> but I have four trailers in my yard, in my backyard. I can't use all four at the same time, but I own four trailers. I mean, that's kind of the same <coughs> same theory. Up until ten days ago, there wasn't a, a, a ski park anywhere near his house. Right after the last meeting is when there was a ski park anywhere near that side of the property. All the rest of them were down at the other side towards the east. And the grass is cut up, which was the grass and they knocked up over the other side. <coughs> Get the grass can. So, I guess if the complaint is about just the excessive amount of sea in the yard. Mm -hmm. and it's not the grass and all of those things, right? Well, I, I haven't been, I haven't been to my son's house in the last couple of years. It's so R three, yeah, for, it's for residential use. But there's nothing, nothing in residential that includes someone going on property. Unless it falls into the uh, under the nuisance, where it would be an abandoned vehicle. Paulie, <laughs> are these are they any sort of like state of disrepair? No, actually, all in one. Like a junk car. Nope. Or left where they're an eyesore in terms of the condition. Yeah. There's only one that I'm waiting on outside of for. That's it. Everything else is one. You can throw a battery in and go right Right. When you said titled, these are all titled in your name. Or, or give us on to me from my direction. I had a bottle for that or something like that. Do they come and go at all? Or okay, if somebody has a desire for one, I'm not selling them on That's fine. But Do you advertise them for sale? Or? None of the ones I have there are for sale. No, nothing else for sale. farther away from his property, but I have pictures to where that ski is. The complaint is about the excessive sea news. How long have you had that many sea news? So as long as I don't have How long? Two years now. And you, like this is, do you just collect them? Yeah, just like Greg collects fire trucks and... Yeah, I do. I mean, there's skis that I keep that are rare skis or skis that I want for myself. I mean, I don't, he's not breaking any rules, he keeps, you know, there's, I don't even see anything in there, and you seem to want to see he wasn't keeping the grass mowed, or unless they were junky looking. I mean, I know it may not be something that you particularly want to see, and I know that, but from our standpoint, our hands are tied, unless something is, unless he's doing something wrong, legally, we can't tell somebody they can't have something just because someone else doesn't want it. I'm in the process of putting a fold on up there if it's on the road back to the middle of it. I don't know, I'm going to put a house in front of it, but maybe a fold on the house and it's never going to be inside of it. But until that happens. Okay, basically, I get it. I figured if it was residential, you, you wouldn't be able to park all the way there. And I mean, we can stand here and say this and say that. Now I know that he don't keep every one of those ski dudes in feds just for his own personal use. He runs a boat shop downtown. Right, you know that. So you I know that for a fact. They're for sale? I'm sure he does sell them. I don't know that. But I mean, why else would you have all the ski dudes in a boat? Well, like you said, he likes them. They're unique. Okay. It's just, 
Unless you, you have something that shows otherwise, there's really nothing that we can do. Well, do you have, okay. people, do you have people that come out there and, and look at them, like to buy them? Are they coming out of the property? Do you have people coming and going? No, I had, I had one uh, I, uh, lift out there before that somebody looked at buying because I was going to sell it. It was my own personal lift for Art the Lake, probably down to another place Art the Lake, but no. Well, so, so if I went into your shop and said, hey, you guys see the you would take me over to the property. 110 skis inside my building there. You can come and look at everything I had in my property. I probably had to do to get something upstairs and I'll sell it. So everything on my property was mine, so I had to sell it. So get them to sell it. So. You had any pictures or advertised? Nope. Everything that's on was advertised. So basically, I got a house and lot up there. And if I want to, I can park uh, 22 cars in, uh, in the yard up there. If they're titled to you in your name and you just collect them because you want to collect them, unless it's breaking the law, then absolutely. So you wouldn't mind the uh, 20 speed dudes parked right beside your house? Sir, I'm not saying I wouldn't mind it. I'm saying at, as counsel, legally, I mean, legally, if it's residential, that's what it should be, residential. Right. Okay, well. Um, okay, but we didn't write these laws. They're just there, you know, the same as I, we all, everybody in this room can think of at least one law rule that they disagree with, but that doesn't mean that we can change it just because someone disagrees with it. <laughs> Alright, so unless somebody else has anything they want to add to the conversation, uh, I don't think, I think if the council's opinion is that we can't do anything, please. I think the, what the consensus so far is that the council is not in a position to tell uh, the owner well, basically I need to go somewhere else. There's nothing that we can do.
one of the primary issues is nobody's getting any money off of that, any new money off of that property for the next couple of years. <coughs> Obviously, they don't get any revenue until they open. Well, the city's lag is even greater than that because depending on the timing of that, the property valuations and the receipt of that additional uh, tax revenue is going to be even later than that. So everybody was left with a gap, I think reasonably around two years, between when there was going to be revenue even for the developer or for the city to cover a mortgage payment, or I should say a note payment, uh, either a total payment or interest only. So this was crafted, drafted with the notion that the developer would have responsibility uh, for ensuring, and again, at a minimum, that interest only payments were made until the city actually started receiving the additional tax revenue from the property tax primarily and, of course, secondarily from the additional payroll uh, taxes that we receive off of that. If they didn't build the project, if they went belly up, if for some reason it ceased to exist or be before that was paid back in full, um, then we would have a lien against the property. Now, it would be uh, secondary, perhaps, to some other stuff that they may have out there, um, but at least we would have some sort of security interest in the property and some of them have recourse down the road. <coughs> That's it in a nutshell. Um, as far as I know, we haven't received comment back. Uh, we have not requested some changes. I should look it over again before I came tonight. I know there was a couple of things that uh, I put in there that might be negotiable. I don't know if the mayor remembers. There was a few things I, I kind of put in there that um, I thought there might be some wiggle room on, but for the most part, it's to make sure that we have some sort of interest in the property in case the tax revenues never come in to pay another back. The purpose of this update wasn't to wasn't to get you to sign off on anything, just right. to kind of keep you in the loop of where, where we're at. It, the ball's kind of in the developer's court at this point. Um, we're not willing to move forward until he basically signs uh, signs a, a developer agreement in the form of promissory note and mortgage on the property um, for us to make that commitment, and then obviously use that. Um, I said, like I said, I put these on here. Uh, these are just the drafts, but I put them on there so to take a look at those uh, and see what the language is. This is what was sent to them, uh, and the mesh has not been back in contact with me uh, as of today. So. But unless you guys have any other questions, there's really nothing else. It's kind of an update. Any other questions? All right. Uh, moving on. Item number five. Uh, the occupational license fee clarification for the public safety exemption. Um, Chair Fields is here with us. Um, he wanted to get a little clarification from the council on the um, exemption for public safety. I can. You'll have to bear with me. I didn't get a copy of that. That's the second.
of course, before this I even uh, took effect, the, the county added the payroll tax and did not exempt uh, public safety from it. So it, uh, so it triggered the clause that, you know, in terms of the, the did away with this section. So that's kind of where we're at. There's still some questions that Sheriff wanted to address. Yeah, you know, the question is, after, you know, reading it, one, I'm an elected official constitutionally. It was established in 1820. And under statute 70.030, all of my staff, sworn and unsworn, uh, are, they work at my leisure. We're not employed in the Grand County Fiscal Court. So any actions the Grand County Fiscal Court takes, I can't, I can't be held accountable for because one, we're not an employee of them. We don't work for them. Uh, and that was the question I had is it's referring to employees of that government agency. And I just wanted to clear that, you know, by statute, the elected sheriff and his deputies are not employees of the Grand County Fiscal Court. Um, you know, the question we raised that we received funds from the Fiscal Court, that I received funds from the state, federal government, city of Crittenden, the Grand County School System, and the Grand County Fiscal Court does. I received funds from them, but that doesn't make me an employee. And that's just what I want to get cleared up to present questions that I'm not an employee. Chuck, can I ask a question? Do you have your own tax ID number whenever yes. you do? So you are considered under the state a separate entity? That's correct. Is that accurate? And they only process your payroll for you. Would that be yes. accurate? Also? And, I, and I actually, well, E. Thomas is our processor. I go through the fiscal court only because we do certain things together for both of cheaper prices. Sometimes I question it. Uh, like our insurance okay. is all grouped together. The county clerk is elected also. She's not an employee or either is her staff of the fiscal court. But her insurance goes through the county. Uh, she's a strictly a fee office. She pays the uh, E. Thomas to do the payroll. Okay. And then your office could separate from them and if you so choose to do everything on your own you could have your own insurance you could have and i understand yeah. why you're doing it but you could be your own entity by yourself would that be accurate yes by the other business but by statute we are our own entity. okay i just want to clarify yeah. and how how you guys were set up yeah what's that so the reason why i asked jeff to come to council tonight was to get clarification on what you know what you're thinking here is should um, should this clause be enacted or should it still stand that public safety is uh, still exempt from payroll tax for the record we all of our own people police fire ems folks in the city limits are paying the payroll tax at this time so see what's happening if i can add the city police being short-handed my guys are sort of getting penalized because it doesn't affect me. I'm stationed out of the town. Uh, but my guys are getting penalized to respond to a call or me personally. If I come down here because one of you have a question for me, then I will call in the same limit. We're a government agency. I'm, still, I'm still confused as to, like, I know you're a legislative official, but you said that your deputies would fall under that and they would also be considered elected officials. I don't see how is that I don't see how that is accurate because they're really they're not elected. They're hired. Yeah but I mean the statute seventy oh three oh says all sworn and unsworn personnel are at the pleasure of the sheriff. So I hire and fire. So basically the county doesn't have the authority to fire. Obviously, me, I'm elected, or they can't hire a farmer. Right, and no, I get that, yeah. but that doesn't make them elected officials. Like, they're, that's two separate definitions, isn't it? Yeah, but it's saying that we're employees of an entity that started a payroll tax, which means the only way we'd be an entity in the Grand County Fiscal Court, the judge executive started county police. As the city had their own police, and if we had county police, they're just like the county road department, the county animal shelter. They're all employees of this court.
because the positions there that you all voted on, I just there was a clarification if if the articles of business order were not. And that's what I'm I'm trying to say is we're not employees under any definition of the fiscal court. Well, I'm confused now because yeah. well, I, I was yeah. thinking I'm confused because if you're saying our EMS is paying mm -hmm. Jared's yeah. occupational office. Yeah. Well, right there says they don't have to. It says they don't have to, but when we first did this, this was to clarify on, this was really intended to clarify on how public safety was treated as a whole. This was before the county even started talking about it, you know, what they did. Um, this was kind of us trying to get back to the to the public safety providers um, for law enforcement and fire uh, across the county that came and worked within the city. Um, when the, what what happened here is by the time that this actually got enacted and before it took over, the county had established its payroll tax. So. The way that we were looking at it is that went ahead and uh, excluded this from being put into effect. Our city payroll tax has been in, in, in effect for two years. Well, we just put this into uh, we just put this into effect a couple months ago. The rate didn't change, but when we went back and we made the changes to uh, to this ordinance to clean it up is when we added these sections and this was that one section so have our guys been taken off my paper no no nothing has changed well, just well, I would be just right I, and and i understand that but the way that we were reading this was that they didn't um they didn't honor our exemption and that's what this clause was intended for because i remember talking about this in, in the meal er, in this meeting that the intent was to leave this in place until such a period that somebody didn't reciprocate it and then it would come back off and then our own guys would be charged again right but why I don't, why are i not like that's why i'm okay but you have two you have two different um things that you need to talk about first you need to deal with the sheriff's you know, okay. if you consider him in and I'll be honest with you, coming into this meeting, my thought was he was a part of the, of the um, fiscal court, okay? With his interest that he gave me, if they would do a business license, in our eyes, the way that it is set up, he would be a separate entity. So he has his own tax ID number, he, he is his own entity. So you have to decide if, he, if you feel that they're going to follow the county or not. And then you need to decide if you wish to um enact this clause on the city of dry ridge ems and fire employees well if we're going to say you have to then technically he is not um a part of the fiscal board so i do believe that or i think that it says that they would be exempt so the, the key word is employed. Yeah, that's my whole argument. I mean, we do receive funds from a lot of entities. We're not employed to make this this report. Maybe <coughs> summarize <coughs> the extent of your connection with the fiscal board. Okay. So they understand exactly to what extent. Legally, similar to cities and counties, there's always checks and balances. The only thing legally, the Grand County Fiscal Court has to do the statute. Each calendar year, they have to approve my budget. Mm -hmm. And that's only for the Department of Local Government. It's checks and balance, they sure can't come in. Um, over budget, or overspend, under budget. The Fiscal Court is a government body that the statute established to look at my budget before I send it to local government. But th that doesn't, I mean, the same as the city, you all send your budget in for approval before you all approve. Mm -hmm. So I guess local they, government. I'm sorry, but don't they give you money? Yes, so does the city of Crittenden School. 
But they don't have to. That's that's the thing. They don't have to give me a dime. The contract with you. So yes. Just like City of Crittenden and Grand Canyon Schools. So what happens if they don't give you a dime? What would happen to you? I'd probably have to lay off three or four nephews. <coughs> well, my question is, and I'll be honest with you, I thought, I did, I thought everybody was exempt. I'll be EMS. I did think, I mean, I honestly thought it was too. Here's my question. It says, in the event of another government agency imposes a payroll tax upon employees of the city, nor within the exempted class, then the exemption for the employees of the government agency should be repealed, and any such employee shall be subject. Why is that sentence in there? I mean, why is it just because if somebody else imposed a tax, why is it that then we have to impose that tax? But it was intended it's for the agency mm -hmm. that imposed it on our people. Like the city of Williamstown. It was intended for like the city yeah. of Williamstown. That's what that. it was intended for. We had no idea when this was written that the county was going to do what they did. Mm -hmm. It never crossed our, our minds. If so, it wouldn't have been written like that. It probably wouldn't have been written at all. Mm -hmm. But we, we were thinking, you know, if they can't extend this courtesy, then why should we extend this courtesy? Kind of idea? Right. I think it was in the back. I think there was some <coughs> that maybe this would encourage the physical court yeah. to add that exemption to theirs as well. <laughs> right. I think that was, I know that was something that we talked about, that in a sense we were trying to help some of the other uh, first responders to get that exemption. Obviously, the county didn't see it that way. But the intentions were good. Well, as far as Chuck goes and his guys, I feel like they should be, I mean, it's like, it, it, reading that and what he just said, as long as it, you know, whatever, and I don't see why they wouldn't need it. If that's, if that's how the council feels, then we've applied this incorrectly. That we, because I mean, I'll take blame for it, I'll take responsibility for it, because I ultimately make the decision, but I misappropriately, or misapplied this to our own folks. Um, so if that's, if that's how this, if, if that's how you're looking at this, then this clause would go back, would be in, still in effect, and we can fix it. How are other counties doing? The first, I mean, other counties has got payroll tax, are there, is there the EMS in your, yeah. you're all exempt? No, they, they all pay that. We tried to do this as, as a, it, be, it becomes a hassle penny when Weed Town comes into town, and then we have to track them. Well, we tried to do this more as a, as a gesture of, of good faith and appreciation. <coughs> right, because they have to go everywhere. Right. I mean, they're, they're hopping from here to there or somewhere else and trying to keep up with where they're at and, and when they're coming. It was actually to try to do the same thing so that way trucking them wouldn't have to do that when they come to the city. You know, they didn't have to worry about those things until our people had to be paying it to somebody else. So we had to be figuring out how much time was spent mm -hmm. in another city or another jurisdiction. So, so if its intent was a good intent, it had some unintentional. You know, I, like I said, I would take responsibility well, for misapplying it. You know, this is even uh, funny. When you think about it, like, like, who is it that you were thinking to? I would have thought the same exact thing, you know, before I heard him just explain it. I would have, I mean, I did. I thought that the sheriff's office was part of the fiscal court. Oh, you're right, too. And I think that's my choice. <laughs> yeah.
what the intention was there. I, I really do. And I take responsibility for misapplying that and we'll make the correction. Okay, so I want to make sure that we're clear. We are saying that the Sheriff's Department is speaking out of the window, correct? Mm -hmm. You need a motion on that, but um, I think it was more of a clarity. It's more of a clarity. Yeah, because it's in the statute, and I just wanted to make sure we're clear on Okay. The we'll interpret it all the same. Mm -hmm. Now, the second issue, do you wish to make a change to our first responders? Yeah. Yeah, well, they would automatically be, because that, that wouldn't have triggered that call. And that's, that's what I'm saying, where I take responsibility for triggering this call, because I just... I, I follow the same logic. Would there be an amendment made to that? Um, I would think that if it's just a clarity that our um, employees, our first responders, would be exempt from that. Mm -hmm. um, what I just need to know is, do you wish for me to go back to the date that this was approved and refund the amount of money that were withheld on those employees? That goes back to March 6th. Are you sure? So, I think this year. Yeah, I think that's I think that's great. It should be March 6th. Oh no, I'll wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
did for the franchise this board. Um, this is for the small cell technology, which is the wireless carrier. All right, so that constitutes first reading of more than 831 and 2017. Uh, 30, 97 from that about it's talking it doesn't mention the dumpster but it's talking about rubbish salvage material junk miscellaneous material openly stored kept in the open well i just said the <coughs> dumpster behind dominoes and uh yeah. all the trash cool. comes in my, my yard the neighbor's yard um i know it comes in the four of the yards in my neighborhood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just, and I'm going around and looking at other businesses, I just think that I'll be at closure for all this. Is the city still have girls down here in the park? Do they have one out here? Or do you have one? It's not in place. You said it used to not be in place in the park. If it went to down there, it went to my own. So, are you, you want to draft an ordinance to add that to closures? Yes. Yeah, I didn't know if there was an uh, ordinance out there already. Jamie, is that in, is that in planning zoning anywhere? Dr. Wicked, fine. Okay, is it, is it in the county? Well, it would have to be ordinance for it. Okay. That way we can, can make everybody do the same thing. Oh, some of them do, some of them don't. How do you feel about that? I mean, how do you feel that all of them should? I think that, that part of them has it, they all should have it. Because it's a constant problem all the way up and down the interstate. Now, I noticed that garbage, like over there by Arts, that the pump station, I think it's by Arts, like under Arts, like down that road there. Yeah, that's where they Jamie, they ain't no time to go with trash. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it ain't come to the business. <coughs> that's what I'm thinking. Oh, that's why they got the lids on them, is to keep right. it comfortable. Right. Yeah, we like today. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't want to lose them at all. Useless. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it goes through this and it says it will change to the read now as follows. Rubbish, salvage material, junk, or miscellaneous material shall be open. Which one? 555. It's sort of just confusing on how some of it is anyway. <laughs> Sometimes it's not even the customers. Like we take complaints up there to Josephina about the dumpsters being on the road and trash everywhere. That's because they set them out there and the wind blows them out in the road, or the dump truck when it drops, or the garbage truck when it drops them, it drops them and they roll out in the road and they just leave them. So it's not even on brook. It's well, I understand that. But yeah, it's hard to pick up any This wouldn't apply to trash bins anyway, because this is salvage and junk yards. That's just, that's just the closest thing I could find. Yeah. It, you know. Oh, I know these, the guy with these dumb 
Ken, there you go. Just be like, Rick, go hang out at McDonald's in the Waffle House. Oh. <laughs> We're going to have a competition with Waffle House, Chief. Oh. <laughs> so when do you think one of the black and white people come? We can sell that white one here. Where's that go? Hmm? I knew that was going to start up, shit. What's that? Put the door in the freezer, put the door in the freezer. This is one more. I guess that was a 50,000 miles off of you, man. So all the stuff in, probably get these bit down. Yeah. They're about crazy. Well, that's it. Can't count crazy. Can't count crazy. Oh, if you're in Covington, I think Covington's like two something and the county's two on it. So you're like four percent Covington. Yeah, Stankins is when we get our refund back for all these years we paid it. Then we get it back it, from March. You won't get it for years. You only get it since I've been acting, yeah. Where's the Bronco? He's outside. I don't understand that. Yeah. Hmm? What? Get your money back? Yeah, she'll, 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 she'll come back to you. You only get $6 back. <laughs> <laughs> Time to take the admin fee out of it, yeah. I'll put my admin fee in there, Grandma. Kelly, if you're working hours. She wanna stop looking for you. I'm going home. See you didn't need much. But he said you put them damn cameras up and he had a damn thing. Huh? That's right. I should have put them up <laughs> fucking 20 years ago. We come down there and we're just gonna put you on for free. You can see wherever you want now. Yeah. I told him I said I want to go in and somehow tap it up or I can get to get on it. Don't here. worry. We'll it. You, you can tap onto it. I'll, yeah, I'll give you the app. All you gotta yeah. do is put it on the phone. Oh, oh okay. Huh? Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, I'll give you We'll cut somebody for it. Yeah, I'll give you the app. I went to the restaurant. Then I'll give you pull it up 24-7. That might be down there. I think so. Oh, yeah. Stop down there, then I'll give you, give it to you guys, and you can put it right on it. I'm you should see that thing. Once you get the first yeah, one, once you get the first one, there'll be no more. I ain't got no, I ain't got no, I don't give a shit what you see. I like to catch them telling the vegetables that's still in the cell in the past. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's on there. You can see them. I think it's the damn guy delivering them things. Nah, the guy told me, nah, he ain't the one stealing them. You need first give you any shit yet? He's from Cincinnati. He needs to go. Why? I was just wondering if they're in business last night. I heard back yet. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you that app and you can just fucking you can yeah, yeah, yeah. click on them anytime yeah, you want. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, Rick wanted to do the walk class, check it out. Something say gas, okay? Man, yeah. I'm always thinking about the citizens. You're, you're, always, you're right. always thinking about getting in the pocket. I'm thinking about trying to make them seven them. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get in your pocket, you, you know, you get that thing for being tight. What are y'all gonna do is get me strung up. <laughs> I don't know, I ain't got to pay shit and everybody else does. <laughs> Rick's like, no, he <laughs> not sitting up. Look at that, Rick. I mean, you might even actually make a reason. Yeah. Right number See, what is it? See, Greg. What's in there? Greg. 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 No, I don't know. I'm gonna do fucking wind time. Wind time? The water and shit. I don't know. I think that's done. I don't think I got to. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna do it for a second. 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 He's on that phone. I don't have no games on my phone. Hey, shit. Hey, I got your whatever app on here. Your let go app. So you can start there and you can sell stuff. I'm playing. Boom Beach. Boom Beach. What the hell is that? You build a little island weapons and stuff. And you go around and attack others. Stop the best time, Ricky. Stop the best time. I don't care anymore except for that shit. God damn, I'm making this kind of matter of fuck now. Oh, yeah. I can't do that. Hey, man. What you doing? 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 What you now you're getting you, you're getting your two percent back. I'm not getting two percent. I'm only getting one point. One point two. You still, I'm still gonna be. So you're gonna get three and a quarter, three, three and three fourths percent rate compared to what you're getting right now. I'll be down to fifty percent. All right, let me ask you this. I remember Jim said he was gonna ask you about but the parking down there. The parking signs we put up. Where down down on North Main, the two hour parking. Yep. Yeah. Can you enforce that? Well, I guess we can. No pass for ordinance, was it? I don't think so. What was the ordinance on it? I don't think it was. You know what's going on there. I don't fucking know. Yep. And then Paul. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the one thing I agree, because the one car that I had was done after a week, and the flat tire on it. Mm hmm. Because I always got this method. Two or three feet. I know. Damn it, Dave! What? I don't know. Well, some of this stuff is hard to enforce unless you got to see your own sign. Like some of these stuff is stop signs and shit. You will not have really have any trouble unless somebody challenges you. If they challenge you, then you got problems. Yeah, sure, yeah. And that's that, that bus down there will challenge you. I'm sure. What's that on? The parking down there in North Main. Oh, gosh. I probably stopped in the other day to ask about all this for the thing on Easy Street. He was asking me about it. Timmy's got two cars down there. One's got a flat tire. Well, he's so fucking good on. Uh, Amy asked me about that. It's been a while. Somebody wants some parking enforcement down there. I pulled up the word. That's just like there's no penalties. Said, don't do this. But it doesn't say what happens if I do it. What ordinance is it? That's whatever one they just adopted here recently. No, we had one. I didn't think we did. No, I just thought they changed it to two-hour parking. Well, it's a two-hour parking ordinance. What happens if you park there more than two hours? I don't think it's even an ordinance. I don't think. Yeah, I think it's just something that they did. Right. <laughs> no ordinance. They There's just, no penalty. They just time. made a two-hour parking period. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not enforceable. Right. I'm sure, we'll work on that. Like I told her, we're going to have to come up with city parking citations. 
if you're going to do that. Oh, bullshit. You're going to ask your uniform citation. You're damn right. Yep. And work as a uh, local ordinance violation. Yep. Well, I ain't doing that city bullshit. But That's more money into your budget, though. Why well, don't? Well, they don't pay it. It's your warrant. Yeah. Well, <laughs> city citation. You're like Hinton. You see their. You see their. Oh, that's your strawberry board. No. Now, how do you think it's the county for take Joe? Well, why don't I just write a damn city citation to start hey, with? Do like Covington does. They write their own city citations. They see the car out. They call and make sure it's still a balance. They'll tow the car. Yeah. And you have to pay the balance for it. You can get your car yeah. released. That's Covington. This guy in Dow Ridge. Okay. So what's the difference? I've got a lot of differences. Like they says, there's no nothing to back out that shit up. I'm just saying, let's make something to back that shit up. Yeah, you, you, know, you have to write the walls in there. But I, I would just do the city citation because the, you're gonna get all that yeah, information. You got to punch in on the uniform yeah, citation. Yeah, that's just as quick to do write that as this anyone. Plus, just as quick to type that as this anyone. If, they, the if they pay the uniform citation, yeah. it's got to go through the county. So. If they pay a city citation, they pay it right there. I don't buy it, and I don't make nothing out of that one bit. Don't do a damn thing for me. No. I'd rather have it go through the state. No, if it comes here, you would. It's just like your old police reports. When, you, when they come up and pay $10, you get the $10 back towards your budget. I ain't doing that bullshit. She's keeping a separate line out no, of let's say, all right, let's say, by God, I write a city that citation, they won't plead not guilty. Where's it go? Yeah, I, I, I think this, it would have to be something in the ordinance. It's just like the code enforcement like board. Have a damn, you have to have a damn city court, which they did a lot. No, you don't have to have a city court. You just have to have an appeals process. And then if they opt to not pay it, well, here's then, the it then it goes to the county, and the county pursues it goes to the uh, district court. I call that. That's right. As soon as I say, they got four people to pay it. My, <laughs> my point is that if they're going to do it, they need to have something enforceable. There has to be penalties and everything written in that ordinance. See, here's one for Broadway. Now, this is parking on Broadway. Persons violating this ordinance shall be prosecuted in the Grant District Court under criminal complaint or uniform citation and shall be fined not less than 20, no more than $100. For each offense plus court costs. Where do I stick the uniform citation when the person's not with the car? Good question. That's why a city citation, you're going to stick it under the. Where are you going to stick that at? Under <laughs> the windshield wiper? Under the windshield wiper. Well, well, I'll stick a copy of that under the windshield wiper. They ain't got a sign for it. You got to check the feet and see if we can do that. Why can't you? Uh, this goes back to when I worked at Cynthia Anna. They had city citations for that. I ain't getting in that bullshit, Dave. That's <laughs> bullshit. Well, here's the thing. We should, we'll, we'll probably end up having to have some kind of city citation because I'll have it on my end. That's your problem. That is my problem. Then when they don't take it, I'll just have you come down and get them for the, the misdemeanor. I'll do it. I'll write a mistake citation. Okay. And that's it. I ain't doing all that bullshit. All that is is just a paperwork nightmare. <laughs> Hey, I agree. You do your state citation, that way it transmits, you yeah, just put local exactly. code. Exactly. And it, they can bring it to us to pay. Exactly. Does it, well, does it have to go? I mean, I know it gets transmitted downtown or to down there, but do they, could we just call and say, hey, this has been taken care of? We would call on everyone. Oh, no. Try to keep track of that and keep district court permission a warrant for somebody we told don't you know each other. get a warrant by God then when you're us or ass we'll get to get paid for the warrant. <laughs> <laughs> See Dave? You have to get one. We we can put that money toward the uh bad arrest wall suit we get into. Oh that was bad. So damn warrant. How's that a bad arrest? Because it was not us to notify district court not to issue that warrant. That's reason I said you should have told about the academy. He said, yeah, I've got a few, but we can't get them until next year at the academy. Well, I wouldn't tell you to throw that. I'm telling oh, you right. that right now. What prospects do we have? No. Mm -hmm. Dig a box. There you go. <laughs> Well, if 
we hire someone to send the academy, we have to hire them before we can send them. You got to give them a hired date. You got to give them a hired date. Okay. You can hire them the day, the Sunday, to send the academy. You just got to have a hired date on the way. Okay. Yeah, that's something that, you know, you gotta, they got to be hired before you go. That's, that's what it is. So they did away with that. I think so. I, I think it, well, I think the more interpretation was now it's so you gotta have you gotta have a higher date set. But their first date of employment with City of Dry Ridge can be their first date for the cash. Yeah, the day before or something. Hmm. Well, it can be the Sunday before because that's when they'll they'll get paid to drive down to the academy. <laughs> like an hour and a half, or hour and a half overtime. Uh, I still say we're short enough because we're down two. Realistically, we're down three. Mm -hmm. So they want to start lining up one to go to the academy. If we get, if you get one lined up to the academy, same thing's gonna happen. Exactly. Don't been told that. I'm just saying, yeah, if you at least had one get lined up, you know the, the, one one, the only one that would stay here yeah. that I know of is Jacob. Okay, mm -hmm. well, ain't nobody going to stay here. Not when you walk down the door and get $65,000. Is that what we're going to do about that? <laughs> <coughs> no, I don't. I'm hearing you problems watch, from you, you people. Watch. I want to hear solutions. Boy, uh, Give me solutions. Be used and share it with a couple. And we tell we a couple of them the same damn boat we are. Yeah. Well, didn't Barry go to the airport? Yeah. Barry went to the airport. But who else? Isn't, isn't Duffy going now, too? Of course, mm -hmm. he will do it. Right? His, his, he really can't count his, his, his wife or yeah, there was From something. the day he started, he knew he was leaving. Yeah, I knew it's, they were saying something about his wife and his yeah. movement. Yeah. He's actually was supposed to have been gone. That's what I thought. But damn near double the salary. Old well, Trump Williamstown, that's so it is double the salary. What here? No, it's up north. Oh yeah. It's close to it for us. Eighteen dollars an hour double would be thirty six. But they're paying thirty one. They're only $5 shy of double the south. That's if you've been there for a while. I don't know if they start now. I think Kyle's 20 something, ain't he? Or even he had been $31 an hour. 65. I talked to a guy when I was in his last class at Fort Mitchell. No, well, who was it? Huh? Who was it? I don't know. I didn't really talk to him directly. He was telling the whole class. Because yeah. they. Our instructor was talking about the forts of northern Kentucky where there's three, I think, three different fort cities out there. Fort Thomas, Fort Mitchell, Fort A. Yeah. And he was like, and, he, and then they got talking about salary. He was like, yeah, we start them. It was your first day of employment with us. You'll be making uh, 65000 Yeah. Yeah. $31.25 an hour. Dang, you know, but then some things I've seen up there, you know, there's no way it, it, that was to come down. You get away with a lot more down here than you do up there. Right. Things. Right. And I don't think that we can wake up tomorrow morning and start paying $31.25. Oh, no. Maybe to Rick, because he's a chief, <laughs> but not for patrol. But, uh... I think, I can't remember, but I think he's the highest paid department then. It's either him or you or Rodney. I feel sorry for you, fuckers, if I'm the highest paid guy around here. Don't starve me. Come on, get your third job like I got. I, I, got I just enjoyed my value meal from Wendy's the four for four deal. Mm. Got that my bottle of water, I can't. Can't afford a fifty cent water in the fridge to bring my bottle. I do. We're cutting back bad. I'm going to, on Thursdays. I'm going to start watching the kids, and then when I go to work, my mom's going to come over and watch them till Wayne gets home. We're cutting back a day in daycare. Daycare is thousand dollars a month. Fuck that. 
<laughs> well, when the wife brings home about twenty five hundred, that's a fifteen hundred dollar profit. No, I think what? Like kids. Because <laughs> she brings home twenty five hundred a month. Yeah. All right. But it cost a thousand in daycare. Well, I'm just saying, yeah. I would be paying that. <coughs> but we're still, you know, we're, we're getting worse than running check to check. But we're, we may cut the expenses bad. How's it going? Your hard work and perseverance, I went from paycheck to paycheck, direct deposit to direct deposit? Yeah. Well, it's just things are getting more expensive. Salary, you know, increases in salaries and keeping up with the increase in percent. So then we're still going to get a little bit of new vitamin increase. Apparently, whatever rate we get this year was done spent to the county. <laughs> no, it's to make up for the county, but apparently, but, they, no, they just voted in here about making that exemption. Because I think they made it to where trucks guys are going to be exempt from the payroll tax from the city. Yeah. And also, the public safety for the city is going to be exempt from it. So you're going to, that you'll see a 1.25 in But it don't count Jamie and Ken or Robbie or Barry back at the public safety. That doesn't apply to the public safety. Shit, I'm about to grab you. going to do anything about it? Shit, don't cause problems. They don't even matter. Oh, I know. What's well, like Kim said, you know, I don't know if you exempt a certain. I think the best all this that thing will turn into a big, big nightmare. I think it'd be better if they just said all city employees. Because I mean, look, that much what would be. You can't do that, and you had all the fucking public out there on your ass. You might as well just let it on. He said, "Just said, all right, Chuck, sorry, you got to pay it." It wouldn't amount to two dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And left to the line. I thought that's the thing. They would just send in two dollars. That'd be nice. Exactly. <laughs> separate business. You're just like a business just exactly. like that. So what he, that's what he's saying. So now you go and make him have a business license? Okay, come going to make a dog table for a business Bullshit. Like yeah. Bullshit, I will. You watch how far that goes. Huh? Yeah, okay, he's going to do it here in a little bit and I turn the water off. Separate entity. <coughs> yeah, just don't the county garage out there has got theirs. And get on the business license and make a good stand with the city and turn the water off. Actually, be honest with you, then he's subject to the payroll tax. Huh? He's subject to a payroll tax, right? If what? If he's a separate entity? There's public safety. But he's not um, a private. He's not private. I, and there's too many exceptions in that. It just should just... Exactly. The left of the water. Now what are you going to do? If the ambulance, the ambulance crew comes around, shit like that. What's the thing? You're looking really good, like I said, because Weemstown, it's hard to track. You know, Weemstown comes in here, we're supposed to collect it on them. On Walton. Yeah, this reason we put the exemption in here because it's too hard to even keep track of that crap. I have a hard job now getting people to pay shit. Hmm. Don't worry, Dave. I'll be calling you. You and Rick, like, hey, did y'all come over here? You need to write a citation and pound a truck. Make sure you have a copy of whatever law gives us the right to do that. City ordinance, direct on the page. Business mm -hmm. license. Make sure you got keep these copy of city ordinance handy. Yeah. I'm just you have copies of them on your vehicle? Yeah. You should. Yeah. You're going to have to hand people, you give them a citation, you have to have a copy of it, the wallet you're quoting. That's your reason just pulled up off the internet. You got to be ready to show to me too, just like that two hour parking. They go down and force that two hour parking now. Okay, can I see that? Because, and me asking to see that, boy, we found a lot of problems. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Did Brad come out today? Mike, he's supposed to. Be. Yeah. Um, now, as far as we hired somebody, I kind of wonder. If we had initially had a vision of making it to Pennsylvania Park, maybe for 
now, your salary increases get us up to a six man appointment. Me. And then I can't even get any value to even apply. But if you get enough salary I, increase, I can't even get anybody to apply now. <laughs> I can't get a body, not one warm body, much less six. Anyway. And then once we get the six, reevaluate and see if we have the money to go. Six. This is now 2018, Dave. At the rate we're going, the master plan, which I have right here, just so happen to have it. Here you go, right here, Dave. I was just saying anything you want us to enforce. Well, and then they say it doesn't make sense because it goes in alternate a written notification be issued for the person if they keep working. Yeah. If they if they're given notice to say because they're not, from now on from they have to stop working and get their license. We're supposed to be at six by that. If they fail to cease, they can be fined not more than five hundred in prison for not longer than six months or both. They should be at six full time people and one part time person. Two thousand nineteen. That's scratch it part time. I got it. I scratched the part time and I scratched the six. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're at three. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you find somebody work part time. That's not how I do I'm that. that. I'm just saying. I talked to, I talked I to Tiffany. I don't know if David's going to retire. I don't know where you guys need to get in the real world. Hey, I'm just saying. If I retire up north, let's say, and I'm even greedy, I retire with 20 years. Okay? I sit out 60 days, 90 days. I don't even 30. Need that. You guess, yeah, it's 30. You don't have to stop at 30. I go right across the street and for a $65,000 a year job. Why am I coming to Dry Ridge? <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, so Why? Is, so those people might Why? move down here. Why? You See, Rick, when you retire, you'll, you'll come back 30 no, days. No, no, you'll come no, no, back. No, 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 no. I'm thinking that. Seriously. Why would you do that? That's if you live up there. Okay. If I live down here, it's only 10 minutes down the fucking road for 35,000 more dollars. Yeah, there's a lot of communities mm -hmm. and officers that live in that town. Yeah. Yeah. They live out here because it's cheaper to live out here. Yeah. They don't want to work out here. Well, that's all changing, ain't it? The <laughs> 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 county's taking care of that problem. <laughs> well, not for that. The property tax will not go up and up and up and up. Not right now. now. Give it time. Well, you about to have a nine well, more morning. People don't understand. Yeah. You're not drawing anybody to come to work down here. Well, that's what that's I'm we have to find people from down south. Hey, if they'll tell me here, I'm driving all the way from I down south to here in County. I'm going another ten minutes up the road. Hey, we could have had that one, but we you, you couldn't know about him. You weren't sure who mm -hmm. was winning. The one that got in that bar fight. Yeah, that's right, Kenny. I'm not. I'm actually sure I don't want that guy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one dude going to hire at the same time as me? Uh, and they ended up getting KJ because they found about that guy oh. getting in a bar fight in yeah, Indiana. Yeah. Indiana. Yeah. Yeah, he's oh. a, he, yeah, he's a Ludlow now. He's at Ludlow. <laughs> yeah, he's no longer the Ludlow show. They're not the fuck else they're getting 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 you gotta look at the reality of the situation. <coughs> Rick wants a raise and don't want nobody else to. Know. No. No, you don't know, hear Rick say anything about that. Oh, I know. Does anybody sit down and put together the new numbers? New numbers for what? For well, what yeah, our yeah. salary should be. To, to, to compete. The problem is, I got 48 other individuals here. Not you got 48 employees here? Yeah. If you want to raise, because the fire department will turn around and say they want one. Exactly. I can't do nothing because of that much. Well, that's when you say, are we having a problem getting firefighters? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Andy, yeah. Did, she passed the test and she got a call that night coming back to the meeting. Yeah. Got a job for the bridge. Yeah, they're in the same boat. And here's the thing. Uh, I, I said this jokingly in front of the mayor. Jacob today, but it is kind of a serious issue, the difference between what we do and what they do. I went over to the firehouse the other day. I just went over there and shoot the breeze with them. 
I walked in there, it's pitch black dark. I can't even tell you who was in there, but I could see three silhouettes of heads. All three of them dead sleep in the middle of the afternoon in a recliner. The TV's on me. Why did I need to be paid? If you hadn't failed the fire department test, you know, you had that job too. I was a volunteer firefighter. I could have easily done that. Now I'm giving you shit, Dave. I just want to be there. But we actually do something on our. Rick, you want your pen? This one? Here, Dave, give this to him. Shit. Hey, it's got the rose. Rose!
Yeah, yeah thanks, Kenny. Just me and my friends. What's your time doing while we're in there? Anything else we adjourn? Good game. Second. 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 Second.